It is 9 a.m. on June 12th. Welcome to the Wright County Board of Commissioners. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation and God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone. The minutes from June 5th. Mr. Chair, I will move the minutes from June 5th. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Houston, second by Commissioner Batch. Regarding the minutes from June 5th, is there any discussions, concerns, questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimous. Review and approval of the agenda. Is there anything to be added on to the agenda? Uh-oh. Breaking the rules. <laughs> Morning, Commissioners. I'd like to request a petitioning item onto the agenda uh, regarding the Justice Center topsoil uh, site work. Um, have a, a change there that came up last week to uh, bring you up, up to speed discussion on for um, approval limits. All right. Uh, let's take that to items for consideration A and move the committee minutes to B. That's on the right. Fair yep. Boy, you move fast. So I'd like to pull agenda item D1 from the agenda today and um, hopefully bring it back next week. Okay. Is there anything else regarding um, adding or removal from the agenda? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. So move, Mr. Chair. Second. Motion by Commissioner Potter, second by Commissioner. Here's some. Any other discussions regarding the agenda? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimous. Consent agenda. Is there anything anybody would like pulled for further discussions? Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Motion by Commissioner Potter, second by Commissioner Burrell. Any other discussions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Same sign. Motion carries unanimous. Okay. I don't think it's 9.02 yet. We don't want to. Oh, it's 9.03. Yep. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Sue Virgine, Assistant County Coordinator. Good morning. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce to you <coughs> Julie Foshing. Um, if you want to come on up. Um, Julie is a native Wright County resident with nearly 20 years of experience in communications. She began her career as a daily newspaper reporter. That role evolved into marketing and communication positions in the manufacturing and nonprofit sectors. Her most recent role was Senior Director of Marketing and Communications for True Friends, the parent company of Camp Courage and Camp Friendship. As a member of the senior management team, she led efforts to rebrand the two legacy organizations into one company through a variety of online and printed media formats. Julie has extensive experience in writing, editing, project management, and website development. She and her husband, Terry, have four children and live in rural Waverly. So we're happy to bring on our communication specialist, Julie Foshing. Welcome, Julie. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. And, and your main job is to make sure that we all look good That's or exactly sound good? That's right. exactly right. Okay. Good. That sounds like a simple job. That's right. That's right. Okay. Now, I'm looking forward to using my experience to help the board as well as the departments in the county meet their communication goals both internally and externally. And there's a lot of great things that I see started here. Just want to help you guys go to the next level. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Welcome aboard, Julie. Uh, this is uh, a point that Wright County need to get to, okay. to a communication to get. We like the transparency, but we also got to get our message out to people, and we need somebody that can coalesce all the thoughts and get them out there so the people see what we're doing, right. as we're not just sitting here you know, drinking coffee, well, I am drinking coffee, but the uh, we're actually getting things done here, and to keep them updated on what's going on <laughs> and what we're thinking about for the future. So I, I welcome you, and, and I know it's going to be a great experience for all of us. Thank you. It's Mr. definitely going to be great having you know, 
all the departments basically have a, a, a point of contact for their communications. And so, yeah, really Mr. looking forward to you. Commissioner Vetch. I welcome administration and the countywide taking it to communications and public notification to the next level. So I, I'm, I'm excited. I know uh, myself as well as a lot of us have a lot of uh, goals that we'd like to achieve. So I'm hoping sooner than later we can get there. That's right. Mr. Chair, I just want to welcome Julie too. I've known Julie for many years. We go back to her college years or out of high school even and her dad and mom farm just south of us. So I've um, known them for a long time and I can vouch for her character and her hard work and intelligence. I used to, Julie actually worked for me down in Delano for a company and I said if all my workers were like her, you wouldn't need a supervisor. So <laughs> it was, um, that's a good thing nobody knew about that ahead of time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, so we, we got a very good person. I'm certain of that. So thank you. Okay. Well, well as we're going to hear from um, uh, the auditor treasurer in a little bit regarding our uh, from the state demographer's office, Wright County is no longer a small county anymore. Oh, really? <laughs> so <laughs> you'll have. Uh, I think you'll have your hands full with trying to uh, get the information out to everybody. Absolutely. Well, I'm ready to roll up my sleeves and get to work. Yeah. Well, thank you for working for the right county. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Adam Tagaro, IT Director. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, Commissioners. We have yet another fantastic employee introduction this morning. Um, you can see we've been working him really hard. So that's why he's <laughs> yeah. Patrick Spouty, he is our new IT man, uh, strategy and portfolio manager. And Pat brings with him over 30 years of IT experience under his belt, including long-term strategy planning um, and a background in multiple areas, including healthcare industry. So I'll let Pat introduce Great. himself. Okay. Great, thanks. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman, Board members. Um, Again, my name is Pat Spotty. Uh, I'm excited to work come Wright County. I've been uh, looking at and working with Adam on a number of good opportunities. I think there's very exciting time for the county in terms of the activities that are going on here and the types of things that want to be accomplished. So uh, I've met a lot of good employees already and really excited to continue to work with other employees and, and see once where they want to take uh, the county with their goals and how they want to achieve them as well. So like Adam said, I've uh, been in the business for over 35 years, IT and uh, the business related experience ranging from design and development from IT and management, uh, business and product development, uh, actually worked with some mergers, uh, business continuity, disaster recovery planning, uh, and some security planning for companies that range anywhere from very small to some of the Fortune 100 companies as well. So I've had a good mix of seeing just about everything in between as well. So um, like I said before, I'm very excited to, to be here. Uh, I'm married. I live in Hutchinson with my wife right now. We have two children. Both are, are gone and have raised their families now, So, but they're close. One lives in Buffalo here. One lives in uh, um, Waconia. So uh, I really consider myself uh, a problem solver. That's what I've been doing most of, uh, most of my career uh, and working with companies and looking for new and better ways to achieve what uh, people want to accomplish. So I welcome the opportunity and thank you for the, for the time. Appreciate Great. it. Sure. Welcome. I'm not sure if you're gonna find any problems though. <laughs> That'd be good. So I, uh, I don't see any ever. Hey. Go ahead, Commissioner. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm, I'm happy you're on board. We need the experienced people to help get us. You know, we've grown. We're, we're, we're at the point we're going to start selling our smoke signal blankets now. We're going to start getting IT up into the century, get where it belongs, and we need people of your experience to help us guide us through this because we, Adam and uh, Sherry have been putting together a great team. It's just a matter of more great members just make it better and help us achieve our goal of making sure we have efficiencies in here and, and getting us up to date on this. So I welcome you and, and and if you moved to either Montrose or Delano, that'd be halfway between your kids and then Charlie would be happy. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Welcome aboard. Welcome, welcome aboard. All right. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Commissioners. Thanks, Adam. Award-winning Mr. Bob Hevela. Hey, good morning, board. Uh, I know my employees have been here for a while, but I have some spectacular employees, too, that I'll reintroduce you to. 
Um, <laughs> the first item on the agenda is the release of the state demographer's estimates. These have been sent out to all the municipalities, mm -hmm. so each of you represent your cities and townships. I encourage you to work with them in case there's any discrepancies. But right now, the state demographer is saying that our estimate of population for 17 was 134,365, so we grew by 1,767 new bodies in Ray County. Uh, to me, the city of Otsego doesn't look correct right. in their populations, not with the growth that they had over there last year. You know, the state demographer's numbers do drive some of the uh, state aids. So if these aren't representative of the true uh, <clears throat> population, we want to encourage our cities to challenge those estimates. And then, of course, in July, I'll release the final estimates. But Mr. these Chair. are the preliminary numbers. Yes, Thank Mr. You, Mr. Potter. Chair. Bob, so have we uh, sent out these numbers to the state and, or excuse me, to the cities and say, do you believe these are accurate? Uh, Commissioner Potter, Mr. Chair, I believe Jackie has done that. Okay. So. Just, okay. just in case they didn't get it directly from the state, I want to make sure they Correct. Got it. Let's not miss something because... Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Chair, like you said, we're not a small county anymore, so... No. No, we're not. Does anybody have any questions regarding demographers? Uh, Mr. Chair, the uh, only thing with the demographer's office, they seem to be in a flux of what they think we're going to be in 2040. I've seen numbers as low as 165 and as high as 200,000 people. And since the 134 and we're a long ways off, I think the 165 is very safe. Uh, probably be somewhere between 185 and 200,000 by 2040. And that's part of the other things we're doing with the planning for that increase in population. Because most people that have lived here a long time remember when this was a very small county. And it's not like that anymore. We're the 10th largest now, we're going to grow to be the 7th largest by 2040, and we need to address the issues that come with that. All right. Anybody else have anything to add? All right. And so, yeah, everybody look, everybody look at this, and if you have any concerns, please contact your um, cities and townships. All right. Moving on. Well, the second item on the agenda is to approve the May expenditure, revenue expenditure guidelines. I just handed out to you what would be probably going forward is just a memo of how we're doing. So at five months of the year completed, we're in a good position. We're gonna, Ryan's gonna show you how to use OpenGov to see some minor trends. But overall, the county's doing very, very well as compared to budget. Um, one item to draw your attention to is investment income. We have not lost money, but this is all that modified accrual. Mm -hmm. so it looks like we have negative investment income. I assure you, we are taking in money. You should have done that before the IT people left. <laughs> <laughs> the um, second item is in Roden Bridge. We did. Uh, Brian broke it. <laughs> For a while there. How many auditor staff does it take to work an overhead projector? That's the, you know. <laughs> He's got it right. He had it before. <laughs> well, we got I two more. We got, we got two more sitting over there that can we, go over and help. <laughs> should have known that the, the numbers people would have a number. <laughs> I'm waiting to see how long until Lindsay has to go up there and help. <laughs> so, board in Roden Bridge, um, one thing we noticed was salt appears to be trending higher than last year. Who knows? That could have been the April uh, snowstorm that we got. Yeah. If you remember, it's a small one. Uh, the other thing is, uh, they haven't yet started to expand their major equipment line item. It's a pretty large item. They haven't spent it yet, so. Um, in human services, they're trending similar to last year. Um, <clears throat> so there's really nothing that I need to draw your attention to for the May expenditure guidelines. Mr. Chair. 
Commissioner Mitch. So, so Bob, because uh, we were projecting that we were going to be over budget in out of home placement from Health and Human Services, is what we were yeah. being kind of notified. That's where when you're saying we're on track with last year, they were telling us that we were that we're trending to be substantially over budget on out of home placement. So that's right. where. But overall, there's enough to make it up in the rest of it. Is what you're saying that the other areas are under budget, so it should wash. Board, I haven't seen the numbers. They may be uh, tracking the actual number of out-of-home placements. And again, you know, finance tends to lag just a little bit, so maybe they're forewarning you that we're going to incur an awful lot of expenses. But um, as of right now, the actual expenditures to budget, uh, he can't get in here just yet. And, and Mr. Chair. <laughs> Go ahead, Commissioner Potter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Bob, in, re in reference to the road and bridge fund, we're sitting in good shape, but you know, that's why we switched uh, a few years back to a, a five year rolling average on like salt and that because just you never it. know from year to year what's going on and how much it's going to be. And like an April blizzard changed things a little bit. Uh, so, and I've, I've noticed a, a few of the bids have come in some have been just slightly under the engineers estimate a couple have been just over so I think with yeah, oil prices and that I think we're gonna start seeing just a touch over engineers estimate for the next couple of years here just the way the markets looking right now so we'll keep keep on top of that to make sure we uh, don't get too far out of bounds on that one because you know as the estimates go down then all of a sudden they go up because that ebbs and flows all the time with the material costs because I know that's starting to climb dramatically right now Hey board, I apologize. Uh, Ryan was going to actually walk you through uh, the revenues and expenditures category. Again, graphically you'd see that nothing jumps out at you, but he'll show you how you could drill down into some of the variances that I've highlighted here. Correct, there, nothing jumped out at us. <laughs> the other thing is that he was going to actually show you where your dashboard is. And again, he's built some several things that are in there. Some of them are the non-financial data, uh, the gravel tax that uh, Derek was talking about. But he does have some pre-built, we don't know yet exactly what questions you favor, but he can tailor a dashboard to each one of you individually, uh, or he can say, hey, here's the shared one. Like, what are we paying for overtime? How are we doing on phones? How are we doing on uh, program expenditures versus grant revenues? Um, Mr. Chair, I will speak to this because Ryan was very, very kind to create uh, one for myself, uh, kind of regulating to health and human services, uh, that basically outlines the numbers of revenue and fees versus levy dollars for uh, DDS and uh, uh, child welfare, financial services. So you can actually look uh, we haven't right now. We have them just on a high level from just uh, social services versus financial. But the goal is to be able to we can break it all the way down so we can actually tell within each area how much is levy dollars, how much we're actually getting in grant revenue, and how much we're getting in fees. But right now it's on there. If you look on the dashboards, um, you can kind of see where we're trending as far as revenue versus uh, expenses and how much we're actually paying for these departments out of the levy. So I, I think it's a that was a huge helpful tool for us to idea yes. realize how much uh, we're actually paying for locally for these mandates. Yep, I, I agree. The board, if, if you remember, some of you had uh, attended a Charlie Francis from OpenGov. He came out here and kind of talked to all the department heads. Part of that dialogue was more geared towards you guys. Uh, he is open to coming out here. So when we start to uh, drive out the OpenGov dashboards to you, we're going to bring Charlie Francis back out here. There's more training at the strategic level of how to use OpenGov versus monitoring GL line items. Okay. So we're starting to build the dashboards for you. We anticipate that you're going to want, you may want some customized specifically for each of you, and we can do that. But otherwise, we'll have dashboards for you that are going to put you in a position of being able to monitor the county's finances better. It sounds like that would be something um, our communication, our new communication specialist would be very interested in. Oh, absolutely. How she can utilize that info. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Chair, I will echo that as we move forward towards the transparency side of the reason why we got OpenGov. I'm going to come up to the uh, truth and taxation hearings. We fully intend to put our budget out there in a format that empowers the public to understand 
what are we doing and why are we doing it? What are we raising for public safety? What are we doing for culture and recreation? They haven't told me no yet. I've gone up there and uh, they've already created a number of dashboards uh, per my request. They haven't told me no yet. So any anything you think you'd want to see the numbers sorted out, here. Ryan can make it happen, I think. Oh, and Mr. Chair, Bob, I appreciate that because our goal as a board has been to increase transparency and to get the numbers out there for the public because it's their dollars and and we need to we need to keep them engaged too. So right. I appreciate that. And, and board, I'll just echo again that the reason why we did find open gov was, was under the directive of coming up with something to prove our transparency. Right. Yep. Yeah. Well, to make it easier for the and transparency. Easier. Yep. I got it. So here's here's Ryan. He's going to walk you through a little bit of the open gov tool to analyze our. Now I'm always going to make it difficult. So uh, this first screen here is just to show kind of like what you was uh, Bob was saying that we're on track, uh, similar to uh, last year. Uh, this is kind of like govern or the county um, as a whole. And if we filter down to the general fund, you can see that uh, that we're on track uh, similar to last year. And if we drill down to the expenses. The more in depth you can see the personnel and the more categories of expenditure lines that, uh, that we're, uh, we're a little bit higher than, um, than what we are last year, but we count for in the budget. And uh, this is similar to last year uh, with the revenues on the screen here. The so short one on the left is 17. Those little taller one on the right is 18. It's yeah. hard to see from That's here. That's actual versus budget, yearly budget, correct? Is that what it is? I can't, yeah, I, I yeah. can't really see. We should see. present it a little bit better. But let me, uh, <laughs> now the title's in the bottom, guy. Yeah. <laughs> the board, if you'll notice that pink on the bottom, that's our investment income. I assure you we have not lost money. The mark to market adjustment for GASB, Reversing it in 18 put me in a negative. We'll build that right back. If What's you would, the oh. dark blue? I can't, the, the dark navy blue? Uh, that, that would be the fines and forfeitures. Or probably, uh, that would be the intergovernment. Inter program aid doesn't come in until June. Okay. So that, that's going to trend lower. But that's cyclical, so we don't. Yeah. That's under reports. That's just one of the general reports. That's not under dashboards then, this one, if I want to go back and look at it. Yeah, Ryan uh, is working off the modified. Yeah, report. So you have access to anybody in the it's a countywide report. You can drill down, and that's where you can do your searching and kind of. Yeah. But I can load that on the dashboard if you want me to. What do we have uh, out on the, on the website? Do we have any of this yet at all? We have gravel tax out there. Again, I want to make sure that the departments are comfortable with the numbers as they're being displayed, and I want you guys to be comfortable. That, but I think that's something we have to sit down as a group and maybe as a committee a whole at some point and decide that, that how we want to transition, and probably with Julie in this room, right. and collectively put a plan together as to what we want to put out there, transparency, and who is going to be accountable for answering the questions to these, because there will be questions as we put that out there. Right. I can tell you GL line items mean a lot to me, but they're going to be confusing to the general public. So what, the way we can group them and present them in their total is important, but I think it helps guide them through the numbers that they have to see. I just wanted to bring up here, I'm just bringing up the capital LA for the road and uh, Road and Bridge Fund, so you can see uh, it looks kind of skewed here because they're going to have a lot of uh, capital LA expenditures. Um, so the big one here is a permanent uh, rural land acquisition. So you can see that we're, they're preparing to, uh, for their construction projects up ahead. So they're, they're doing their purchasing up front here. So they're ready to start um, here. 
Um, so that's our permanent right away. So we buy that before we start the projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, another. Yeah, we also don't get our federal funding and state funding until after this is done. Yeah, and certified. Yeah. I still want to bring up uh, the salt uh, expense because um, it's on the report here. So you can see that uh, noted that last year probably didn't have as much salt expense. So in, uh, currently in this year that we have more uh, than what is actually budgeted um, for that line. And so um, again, so what is, what is the first bar? Uh, and that's the 2017, 2017 budget. amended budget. And then that's the 2017 where we're at last year, the May. Okay. And then the uh, third uh, bar is the 2018 amended budget. And then uh, far right is the, where we're, uh, the current. Is the actual? Yeah. Okay. Virgil, don't let it snow in, in November, <laughs> December. You don't have enough money for salt. We'll, we'll park the plows. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then. I appreciate Ryan doing this. I asked him to do this at uh, 4 15 yesterday afternoon. Mm -hmm. to actually, kind of walk you through as a stutter step to deploying the dashboard to you guys. So he's doing a good job here. Yeah. So at any point, too, as you see me go through the report, you can hit the reset and we'll bring you back to the main beginning where we'll take all the filters and everything that I was uh, doing to the report. So what I did here is I just filtered on the uh, Health and Human Services Fund. So I'll bring up um, uh, their actuals and their budget. As here, you can see that um, it's, uh, similar to last year, and that all, everything is not, uh, not uh, like a big variance. Well, it looks like they're a little bit ahead of the last year, right? <coughs> Understanding, yeah, two shorter bars. Yeah, but that it is accounted for uh, <coughs> budget did increase a little bit. Uh, what I what I wanted to. Uh, It's kind of noted here is that um, with the budget, there's uh, variances in some of the state and uh, federal revenues, uh, but this is um, the norm kind of because we have to expense or spend it and request reimburse it from DHS. So in the meantime, this is kind of like yeah, the late time kind of when when we get the revenues in. So, Mr. Chair, uh, I I. I hope all of you members have got a chance to at least look at this, but I think I really hope that uh, a challenge administration maybe set up a time for us as a group to sit down uh, with Julie and kind of start that process to uh, turn some of it more facing forward because I think we, we have a, enough information there now that I think we can pick and choose a handful of them to start bringing it out there. Yeah, I don't think you need to challenge, though, administration. I don't know. Challenge. I, I, I'm challenging, no. basically putting it as a, as, as a please do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, each of you have a login to OpenGov, if I understand that right. So Ryan's going to show you how to get to the dashboards. Yeah, so when you log in, it'll, uh, I think it'll, auto, it'll just come up with the screen here, and it'll give you all access to any reports that you have. Um, then you hit this dashboard uh, report tab on the right here. Go down to your be way at the bottom at the commissioner dashboard. So these are all the saved views that Bob or uh, anyone uh, throughout the county will like share this view, and then you can add it to your tile here. So if, kind of what it does, it will bring you that snapshot of that report, so you don't have to remember the filter, um, really the ins and outs of it. If you just want like a really like highlight, hey, this is what this program's doing, and this is what they're saying. So you can just kind of keep track in real time like as, as the report's updated. You won't need to remember, run it by this fund, this object code, or, or this, uh, when we bring other non-financial data in here too, so um, whenever they wanna update that report and, and that report to you, you'll be able to see that. And I so, do wanna thank you for keeping very, very current information on there. I mean, I think most all of the, the charts are less than 30 days as far as from an update. I mean, there might be a handful. Be updated. Live. Yeah, so hopefully I'll be like every night it'll be loaded in all Please. the time.
And um, so those are some of the, the highlights. So I just kind of loaded that save view. So on the dashboard here, you scroll away any new, well, you can uh, change the views on this, but at the bottom here, uh, Bob was mentioning like the investment income, so we could save that view and kind of show it. So it, you, when you're looking at this, you would be like, oh, something's up here, something's wrong. But you can see that, um, that we were uh, noting this and that, uh, that the adjustment was made here for the Gatsby. So, so any of the variances that were noted today are on the dashboard view, way at the bottom of the tile. So, okay. look back uh, at it. Right. Well, well, I'm hoping that <laughs> on the website it's showing up clear, so people can see it easier. I guess I'll have to go back and look at it later on the video to make sure that that's happening. Okay, make Chair. it easier. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I can see if you're watching this on the video, you're clicking through this quite a bit, but a lot of this information is available to the public to see, so if they want to know how much, what is Not available. yet. Not yet. Not yet, but it's working on it. Because yeah. if somebody wants to see what do we spend on roads, what do we spend on salt, because there's always that inevitable question, and how come you don't know that off the top of your head? Well, well, there's a lot of information to try to keep straight here, and you want to make sure you put out good information, not bad information. And so at some point in time, this will be available for the public to see? Yeah, well, the, the, the thing is we want to sit down as a group and pick and choose which ones because we can't just give full access to the general Correct. public to, this, to the software because it would be to some data. Correct, but we can have highlights. Well, we can highlights. Things. We can actually take snapshots of this program and actually turn it face forward to the public because that's the first question that I'm going to get asked about this if I saw this what it, what does this mean and how do I get to see those numbers and because when they click through that quick it'd be tough for you to follow along if you don't have the basis oh, yeah. of what they're doing yeah and that's why I think it's trying to find the right ones to get out there to make okay. it easier mm -hmm. Fair that's will be the important yeah. thing be a couple a things discussion. one we're looking at what our sister counties are putting out there through open gov we'll try to mimic that we'll try to improve it uh, the other thing mr. chair uh, commissioner vetch has access to OpenGov on his phone, and while he was at a township officers meeting, he could access this report. So having these numbers off the top of your head, I'm gonna give you a tool to kind of look up some of these numbers. Yeah. So. And this report too is, um, you can load, uh, a, load like a user guide, so like a, how to use the application, but you can even uh, load in the, the file that we were going over today out on here, so when, make it face forward to the public that they could load in the views and they can uh, see it more clearly too. The big thing that we have to do with turning this face forward is we have to have some sort of a story to it because just putting the numbers face forward right. without having some sort of an explanation, yeah. it could lead people astray. So mm -hmm. that's kind of us picking those charts that we want to put out there and actually helping create those stories. Right. If I can echo that, we'll have the story, but we'll also have the data form. So I mean... Right. We'll guide you through it, but here's the data too that if you want to. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, yeah you, Ryan. thank you. <laughs> All right, now we get to talk about your favorite subject, Bob. Absolutely. So uh, as, as Matt sure. comes up here, I'm going to ditch the podium. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chair. Matt's going to walk you through the next two items. Mr. Chair. Mr. Potter. Did we actually vote on a May expenditure? Oh, I'm sorry. No, we Can we did adopt not. that, please? I'll make a motion to approve the May expenditure revenue report. Second. Motion by Commissioner Potter, second by Commissioner Batch. Is there any other questions, concerns, discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimous. Thank you, Commissioner Potter, for reminding me. Well, we got off track there for a little bit. It's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Right. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Um, I have two items on the agenda today. Um, just a brief background on County Dish 38. It's located in Charlie's district. Um, we've recently completed a reestablishment, or reestablishment of records and a redetermination of benefits uh, in preparation for this work. Um, and now we're kind of looking to move forward with it. So the first one would be to initiate the repair proceedings to the tile portion of the system. Um, we actually had a camera scope this portion back in 2013, found that there were some issues um, now we're looking to go forward with the repairs on that. So that would be the first um, thing that we, we need to decide on. No, that's rerouting it. Yes, it would be a reroute and repair. Okay. So, so it's eliminating what we have under the trailers. Yeah, Yeah, and Mr. Chair, did, did, uh, I'd say there's three different alternatives it looks like here. Did, did they, are they going to put a cost to each one? Is that what they're going to? 
Yeah, we kind of have a, a pretty good idea of where to go. It'll probably run across, like around the highway, I'm assuming. It's kind of what we decided on. Um, so they have a really good idea of what yeah, the reroute it, will be. It seems... Uh-oh. <laughs> it, oh, it, it, the, the main issue is there's a public waters wetland located in there, so we're just yep. trying to, you know, minimize the impact. And regulatory. Yeah. Mr. Chair, members of the board, I, I think the option that goes along U.S. Highway 12 and then up the side of the property is probably going to be the one that's going to be the most cost effective at the end, just because we can use existing right away is my mm -hmm. assumption for, for this uh, utility. It, it really, it is a public utility at the end. Okay. So I think we can probably get work with MnDOT to put the tile portion along their portion on the southern part and then we're just going up the side of the property. I think it's the least amount of disruption to the trailer park and mm -hmm. utilize this existing right away. And then, Mr. Chair, if I might. Go ahead. Um, I don't know if this is a matter, Greg, but the, none of these, it seems like we don't have a clean cut deal in our ditch systems ever, I don't know. <laughs> but this trailer court utilizes ditch 38 as their storm water. And when we did have the camera down there, I mean, there's bicycle parts in there and, 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 and just debris. What are we going to do to keep that debris out? Because they're, they're, we can't block that off and flood them, I don't imagine. But is there something that can, like let's say we did this route along the highway where there are storm sewer, that we would not be responsible for it anymore, I would think. I don't think we are now. But that system still would have to drain into here. Um, and I would be nice to keep the... <coughs> you know, the, some of the debris out. I don't know if there's a filter type thing that a person could put in or what. Mr. Chair, before I took this job, I actually worked for a couple cities and I remember the city engineer telling me somehow we get couches into our stormwater system. Wow. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so things can happen. I mean, the best screening is just as I, good as it is, but. I um, think on the, on the video though, it's, it wasn't a bicycle. It was one of those old scooter pushers and things like that. It was parts, down in okay. there. It was just, a lot of other yeah. things. The, in the engineer will take into account the current drainage for the facility, and if we have to build a private line that reconnects over, we'll do that for them. Mr. Chair. Uh, as part of this. I mean, what you have before you is just a preliminary kind of guidance of where we think maybe the reroute could go. But Mr. Potter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Greg, uh, MnDOT is fully aware of this. They're online. I don't want to create a problem with them down the road with 12 being in their utility area. So you're saying they're they're know this, they're on board with this, don't have a problem with this, it's not going to interfere with anything that they have for the future plan? Mr. Chair, Commissioner Potter, at this point in time, um, the engineer just kind of put out three very preliminary plans. No discussions have been had with MnDOT or even, frankly, the trailer park at this point in time. Okay. So it's, it's preliminary, but looking at it from a... 10,000 foot level, I'm hoping it would work in that right well, away. The, the question is I, I want to do it correct and I'm, I'm less worried about if it saves two bucks going this way, that way. I want to make sure it's correct for the long range that we don't have, we just created a problem down the road for somebody else to deal with by doing it this way because we saved a dollar. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we don't want to have to do, do a reroute I, I don't want in to the future. That. No. I, no. I would think that it would be an advantage to um, the trailer park to run it down their street because then it'd be easy for them to utilize it as stormwater collection, and then maybe we can get them to help pay for part of it. Well, who's going to be paying for it is the entire drainage system. It yeah, but if they're going to utilize CD38. part of it as their as their stormwater drainage, I would think currently it's our benefited property owner. So we have to maintain those benefits. Can, can I uh, slip in real quick? Um, so that's, there's two items on the agenda. One is for, you know, just for you guys to initiate the repair proceedings, and then the second is to approve Houston Engineering to do all this. Um, I included a, a map of the potential realignments, and that was just preliminary. Basically, Houston, since they did the reestablishment of records, kind of gave that to us as a freebie with some general ideas of how you could go about doing that, and that's kind of why I'm also recommending approving Houston Engineering to not only do this engineering, but to be the construction management portion of this because there will be a few issues that will come up. Um, and they also came in as a low bid, so it's mm -hmm. somewhat of a win-win. Uh, Mr. Chair, have we, have we uh, put a, you know, so we, this engineering is going to give us a total cost for the repairs then, correct? 
Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so then that way we can kind of go back to the uh, members on 38 to kind of give them some transparency as to what they're what they're you can expect to be on the hook for. Yeah. So the the engineering costs include you know all construction management maintenance, but they're also addressing what needs to be done with the existing tiled system underneath the 12 high mobile estates, which is could be a big issue. I, I mean, Charlie has a little more experience with it. I wasn't there when they did the camera work, but that's part of what their bid proposal was. Is we, what could we, that way, if we're not for abandoning that piece of it, we, if we, we'd have to fill it or what we'd have to do as yeah. far as to make sure it's safe. How to prevent a, a serious public health issue. Okay. So. I'll add that, you know, if you remember in the past, we've had sinkholes uh, buy some of those trailers from the collapsing of that tile. So we're, mm -hmm. we're going to have to address what to do with that tile. For rerouting it, we may have to fill it in, but we'll have to deal with their, their runoff. So, mm -hmm. But that will all be taken care of with the engineers. That's why we have experts. No, that's all I have. Oh, I thought you were going to say something. I was just breathing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> Go ahead. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the potential realignment or the repair request for County Ditch 38. You want to do them all separate motions? Is that two separate? Okay, so then I'll make a, number one a motion for the repair on County Ditch 38. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Vetch, second by Commissioner Burrell. Is there any other discussions? Is this the one, Mr. Yeah. Chair, that Waverly was going to take over? Yeah. 30 <laughs> That's the one we've been trying to com trying to convince the mayor, but yeah. she just doesn't seem to be interested. And Mr. Chair, after five years of, of knowing that they, we had this problem, it's good that we're moving forward Finally. on this. Yes. Yeah. Appreciate that. Um, any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimous. The second item is the order or to accept uh, H Houston Engineering's proposal. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll make a motion oh. to approve the Houston Engineering bid for the Engineering Construction Management of Ditch 38. I'll second, I'll second that in the amount of $50,895. Motion by Commissioner Burrell, second by Commissioner Vetch. Is there any other discussion? Questions? Uh, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Potter? It's not to do with this one. It's the last one. That, did that need to be in a resolution form? Yeah, we have a resolution before the board that we need to adopt it. Okay. I, I don't that that that's for the Houston, realignment? That points Houston points. Engineering as the engineer for the realignment. So this one is a resolution that we're yeah. active on now. Okay. I, I think in your capacity as the drainage authority for CD38, you want to move that resolution. Okay. Yep. Thank you for the clarification. Mr. Chair? Go ahead. Aye. 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 Motion. Resolution carries unanimous. I guess I didn't see the resolution part. Did you need an order for the rerouting one too or just the accepting the bid? Just Chair Commissioner Vetch, at this point in time we're just um, initiating the process and appointing an engineer to study okay. it. Yeah. So we don't actually we don't we don't have an official repair. I mean they have to go out and plan it, then we're going to have a public hearing. We'll meet with mm -hmm. the property owners on CD 38, and we'll go from there. Okay. Yeah, we can't approve something we don't know how it's going to go yet. Exactly. <laughs> we don't know how it's going to go yet. Yeah. So. All right. Thank That's you. Good. Mr. Hawkins. Good morning, Chair Dodden and Board of Commissioners. Today there's one item for your consideration, and we're requesting award of contract 1808 for construction of roundabout at Highway 34 and 134 in Buffalo. We received bids on Thursday, May 24th. Summaries attached. Uh, Fane Companies of Albertville is a low bidder, and we recommend award of the contract to Fane Companies in the amount of $1,192,623.83. Mr. So moved, Mr. Chair. I'll second that, and I just have a. Yeah, motion by Commissioner Potter, second by Commissioner Houston. Go ahead, Commissioner Houston. Just a question, and I know Buffalo Townships. On been informed of this, and you've yeah. had meetings with them, so correct? Yeah, we met early on yep. um, to go over the detour route. And, okay. And then also this, um, we're going to have it start after August 1st, so there's some activities out in that area where the ball fields are, and they have the rodeo, so it'll, it'll be started after those okay. activities. Yeah, appreciate that. And actually, I think this was originally slated to do last year, correct? I think at one time we had yeah. it in the plan that would have been done last year. Yep. All right. 
Thank and you. how is this funded? It's in our budget for local levy, levy. funding. For local levy. Okay. Correct. All right. All right. Any other questions? Yes, yeah. yes Mr. Chair. Uh, Virgil, as I alluded to earlier, you're starting to see, are we seeing a, a trend of uptick against engineers estimates? Because I know for a while we were trending down. Yeah, and, and oh, part of bit, there's it's a twofold. Actually, there's a couple things going on here. It's contractors are busy, and um, so the bids are a little higher. And the other thing was there was that uh, oil, the um, oil refinery in Wisconsin that blew up, and oil prices for bituminous mix have skyrocketed. So we we were very fortunate. We we let our pavement preservation project in February, because so we had bids in the mid 30s, and now big contracts like that, the bids are coming in in the upper 50s for mix. Per, per ton, so Your timing, that's part it, of it. But just to reassure the public, when because some people keep asking me, oh, engineers' estimates are that's a joke. There's nothing to it. No, it's based on past cost, and it gets adjusted all the time because refinery fires or whatever right. material cost increase. Yep. Things kind of out of our control. But yeah. as you start seeing, for the last couple of years, we saw a lot of bids were under the engineers' estimates because you had to go on the past, and now we're going to see them tick up a little bit. Uh, in general, in general, the, the earlier you bid a project in the year, the just in general, the better prices you can <coughs> get, but not always. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Burrell. Um, Virgil, what are the speed limits around this on 34 and 134? There, this are? this is um, very much exactly the same, really, as 35 mm -hmm. and 134 roundabout. It's high speed, all 55 miles an hour. Yeah. And actually, doesn't it go 45 miles an hour? Until you get to the other side of the yeah, roundabout. because yeah, the part between um, target that goes past target, I think you're correct. That is 45. There. I mean, that's the same on 35. Yeah. It's 35 until you get to the other side of the roundabout, or so you get east on 35. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's considered high speed roundabout. Yep. You lose. So, yeah. how fast can Commissioner Brell actually travel <laughs> around it without? <laughs> Tipping over. Well, he'd have to tell us, I guess. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what vehicle. You yeah. have. Okay. <laughs> they gave you a free press on trying, right? <laughs> oh, and and Mr. Chair, Virgil, people are getting better at roundabouts. You know, you have the occasional person that, if a car is coming from a long distance away, they just stop and wait. But most people, you know, have got the the rhythm of of how to. <coughs> Uh, we're seeing in. that the, mm -hmm. the more familiarity people have with them especially the single lane roundabouts we don't see as much issues there some of the multi-lane ones um, there's a little more um, mm -hmm. issues with mr. chair go ahead commissioner Thank you, mr. chair and this morning I actually witnessed somebody stopping for a pedestrian at the appropriate spot mm -hmm. on a roundabout which good. before they were going right past them not stopping for them but today I actually saw somebody actually stop for them, which is good seeing that they're thinking they're looking out there and they didn't get rear-ended? <laughs> good. I didn't hit them. Oh, good. <laughs> all right. Any other questions? All right. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Aye. It's on a 55. I don't like them on a 55. There's, there's, a, stop sign. there's a stop sign there now. Uh, yeah. Four-way stop. Four-way stop. Okay. okay. All right. Whatever. Motion carries 4-1. That's my principle. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all righty. Mr. Kelly, would you take the uh, Committee of the Whole, please? Are we, uh, we going to take now? Alan's sorry, item Alan, first? We switched them. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How could I forget Alan? My apologies. Good morning. So I wanted to bring an item to the attention of the full board uh, based on the requirements set forth for change orders on the Justice Center project of anything over $20,000 going to full board uh, review. An issue came up last week that was um, urgent and timely that um, had a meeting with uh, Commissioner Potter, uh, spoke with uh, both Commissioner Vetch and Husum, and also placed a call to Commissioner Burrell. Um, we had found a large amount of topsoil on the site that was not identified. Uh, we did approximately 30 soil borings before we started the project, um, identifying quantities across the site. Once they got into the dirt, uh, they found a lot more topsoil than was identified in pockets um, that potentially were not 
some of them were not uh, bored in that specific location. Um, a lot of the soil was found immediately to the south side of the law enforcement center parking. As the site kind of drops off, they found about, I have some photos if anybody wants to see it, but about four feet of topsoil in that area uh, when it was identified throughout the averages on the site of being around a foot, 0.8 to a foot. Uh, also found that the berm um, immediately adjacent to where they were mining the gravel at the north side of that where the berm went kind of east to west we could see the gravel line you could see the topsoil and then as it carried around to the east um, alongside of the bremer property um, the berm was covered in in foliage you naturally would kind of think that the gravel carried into that as it did across east to west but as they got into it with the uh, track hoe found that it was about 13 feet of topsoil and the gravel just stops at some point um, that it had been mined and, and we were unaware that that was the condition. So uh, a couple spots where probably uh, there was some spoils left over that were deposited from the law enforcement center that they had a pocket of, of extra soil. They just dumped and graded it. Um, just some things came up, um, kind of unforeseen items. So uh, we, after those discussions last week, um, it was urgent and timely. They actually had to get the, the footprint done. Um, they had the survey yesterday uh, so that they could start setting forms and concrete coming tomorrow. So um, they started moving that uh, soil. Kind of the cost aspect of, of what we're looking at is, as you know, they're moving the gravel from the borrow site on the north side of the entry road um, along Sheriff Support um, at a about 35,000 yards we had to bring across the road um, for a prep of the of the pad. Um, so they're already bringing their scrapers with soil over. The most cost effective way and the best way to get rid of the extra topsoil was to have them grab topsoil and take it back on their, on their second portion of the round that they were doing um, bringing the soil over. Um, so that's how we are proceeding. Um, moving that soil to the very north side of that uh, parcel uh, where the borrow site is, there's approximately, I want to say it's about two and a half acres, the north side of that field was left untouched. Um, so they are depositing that in kind of a berm fashion across the north side and then back on the west side a little bit. So as you're driving Braddock, there'll be kind of a rounded berm on that property. Uh, right now it's about five feet tall, um, just kind of partially blocks the field, um, blocks the sheriff support a little bit. Um, the cost to do that is $1.29 a yard if they're doing that in, in the rounds, uh, the extra fuel to make the extra uh, drive out to get the topsoil and then the extra to take it a little further north up on the berm. Um, so we're, we're cautiously kind of watching how big it's going to grow. We don't want it to get much taller than it is. It's, it's pretty appropriate now at five to seven feet is, seems to be a good feel. It doesn't look like a mountain, um, but also provides a little more blockage, which I know some of the neighbors and, and has been expressed an in interest before uh, relating to the <coughs> trees that share support and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So it actually may be a good um, benefit to have that screening there. Mm -hmm. um, however, we also have the alternative, um, since we are berming it, we could also call piling it, whatever, um, down the road that potentially if we allowed that parks or highway could grab that topsoil and use it for projects in the future as well. So uh, if we wanted to eliminate it, you know, down the road, you could use it. If not, if it looks good and we throw some seed on it, maybe it's a nice berm, nice feature to actually do some screening. So uh, we won't know the total um, cost, which was kind of the ambiguous piece of it. We estimate there's, it's probably about thirteen or $14,000 to move the topsoil. Um, and the, kind of the bad side of the result of having extra topsoil is that means that you have less um, good soil that you want. So it probably means bringing more of the gravel over as well. So we'll have a little extra cost because there's, after they move all the, the gravel and the topsoil's gone, there's potential they'll still need to bring more gravel over just because of kind of the timing. Um, it was really important to get uh, moving on it just so we could make use of those two-way rounds so that they weren't done hauling gravel by the time we had to move the dirt, uh, the topsoil, that would have been a lot more expensive. Um, so what we did is on the site, the field, they went and they surveyed it. Um, he shot all the points with his uh, GPS gun. He's got everything documented as to elevations, points on the field where the berm is going. Uh, once the soil is completely moved, uh, we'll shoot points again and then that can be calculated by volume based on the points that were surveyed on that flat surface. So now we've got a berm, they do 3D models and it just calculates the volume in a pile. So that'll, that'll give us our true determination 
Uh, we don't have a good, I shouldn't say good, an accurate number as to how many yards it'll be because we're finding little pockets here and there that are that are adding up to more than was suspected. So one of those unforeseen things we have about just shy of 2.1 million in the contingency fund. So these are the kinds of things that are not fun, but in the in the line item, um, these are the kinds of things that uh, you deal with in a construction project like this, and that's why you have the contingency. So I would anticipate it's somewhere in the 30-ish thousand dollar total um, once we have to bring the gravel back over and take the topsoil, um, but I won't have a, a firm number on that until we have it moved and we're basically approving in the change uh, a cost of $1.29 to move the topsoil um, on the two-way trip and then depending on how what well, the timing works out from the gravel being brought over and the topsoil gone you know if that becomes a one-way trip uh, there's a breakdown of some pricing um, four different options just depends if it's a one-way topsoil one-way gravel two-way topsoil two-way gravel there's there's four different line items so so I want to bring everybody up to speed on it. Uh, I have photos, maps, whatever you need to see at some point. If anybody's interested, I can share those with you. But it's it's just one of those things that comes up in a project like this. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Potter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Alan, we talked about this last week on what was going on. And you had some estimates in that 45,000 range to do all this. And we think it might be a little bit lower. But I just don't want to have to come back because it turns out to be $46,000. Come back again. Uh, I'd be comfortable if anything less than 50000 If it gets over that, come on back again just because that's a nice number because if you find other secrets, and that's precisely why you put contingency money in all your projects because when you dig a hole or open a wall, you don't know what's back there until you open it up. You know, and in this case, we found a surprise. You know, and nobody knew it was there. You did borings. You did all your due diligence. It just happens it's one of those things yeah i feel comfortable under that number uh, really what we're, we were focused on we've had but extensive meetings with us site work and contiguity and bkv we've met a lot and walked the site gone through it and uh basically trying to get down to the dollar 29 a yard was really our focus and then we'll figure so out the quantity is a good so number to I, I, just because i feel it's comfortable probably going to be a little high but just give you a, in case we find something else because you never know until you so i will have a change order coming uh, from contiguity um, basically allowing in the change order a description of the site work and then establishing those uh, cost uh, per yard quantities depending on how they do the um, process and then we'll have to do the measurements as we get it moved and figure out um, keep track anyway of how they're moving it is it a two-way a one-way and they'll keep a log of all that mr. chair Commissioner Potter. I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, authorize <coughs> expenditure up to that with Alan to go with a gravel not everything else just this gravel issue right now um, and come back with a final when we get this and see where it actually shook out to Make motion to approve the expenditure to correct the soil issue that's before us now. Up to fifty thousand dollars. We have fifty thousand dollars to cap it because yeah. I think we're pretty safe with that number. Yeah. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Potter, second by Commissioner Houston. <coughs> Commissioner Burrell, did you have a question? No, no. I just oh. wanted to say a thank <coughs> thanks to Mike for getting the thing moving because if if we didn't take action right. last week, I I know it was kind of a you know, I maybe if we had an administrator, he could have just made that call. But <laughs> what, uh, yeah, had it become a, instead of a two-way to a one-way <laughs> haul of the topsoil when it went from a dollar twenty-nine to a dollar ninety-eight, so it almost doubled yeah. in cost. But it, so. it it needed to get done, and I, I just want to thank Mike for handling it. So sometimes you do have these exigent circumstances. You have to you have to move forward, and this is something yeah. not anticipated, <clears throat> and we we expect those in any construction project. So. And How deep did they do the borings? Uh, I think they were down like 30 feet. They wanted to get down through the topsoil, through the, there's some clay deposits out there as well, and then into the gravel to see how much gravel there was. And they missed every one of these spots. Well, no, there's really just two locations that a majority of it's coming from, right off the side of the, of the um, parking area. I mean, we talk four feet over a, not a big area. I mean, you take four feet over the course of the size of this room, um, you spread 30 borings across the site, you're going to miss pockets here. And, you know, the, a large portion of it then is in that berm that you can see the gravel line and then it just stops. And it looks all the same until you open it up, but it wasn't the same. So it, 
trust me, I've gone through the <laughs> digging into what happened here, and uh, I've come to a conclusion that there's two pockets that just right. they didn't get they didn't get caught. So, Mr. Chair, Go this ahead. falls under the uh, category of sins of the past. <laughs> They're coming back. We have to deal with. All right. Any other questions? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimous. Thank you, board. Thank you. Um, Coordinator Kelly, could you take Committee of the Whole, please? Yes, sir. We met on June 1st, uh, Committee of the Whole, to just, uh, we had representatives from the County Board, of course, uh, staff present, as well as representatives from the 10th Judicial District listed on uh, the minutes here. Uh, first item was the furniture, equipment, and technology costs with the Justice Center. Um, Glenn said the statute is vague on the state's responsibility for funding items in the Justice Center. Uh, McPherson and the 10th Judicial District uh, operate and under documents and the responsibilities. Uh, documents which are attached to the minutes uh, come from around uh, the transition from when um, the state took over the courts from the counties back in the early 2000s and we referenced those uh, throughout the minutes. Um, McPherson said the district plans to move their existing chamber furniture and jury chairs to the new building. Uh, they're going to be putting together an inventory on any additional jury chairs that will be needed um, to populate the jury assembly areas. Uh, may be needed, so we'll have to <coughs> order those. Um, then we started talking about the technologies in the Justice Center. Uh, I said a decision needs to be made on the maintenance expectations after the install. Uh, McPherson said the state will fund the purchase and maintenance of the computers used daily in the courtrooms. Uh, courtrooms are being designed with the ability to display and users will be responsible to bring in their own computers. Uh, there will be nine courtrooms in the new Justice Center. Uh, McPherson said it is rare to have more than three trials going at once. and She did not envision that you would be using the, a more complicated audio-visual system at the same time. Um, Patterson said that uh, Tier 1 troubleshooting training is desired, uh, meaning that his court staff will try and uh, solve issues with AV systems as they occur before bringing our IT staff into it. Um, if issues do arise, it could be moved to another courtroom. So the committee discussed uh, the potential need for additional IT staff to assist with the troubleshooting. Uh, Tagaro said that be a technical support specialist that would respond to any request the help desk uh, that came into the help desk. Um, just trying to summarize here. A Deline reference the 2003 state county expenses document as it relates to furniture replacement. Uh, McPherson stated that it is the intent the Justice Center is furnished with furniture by the county for the new construction language. Uh, if something needs replacement beyond that, state will be responsible for that replacement. Uh, Jumper said the intent is for the new cubicles in the Justice Center as the existing cubicles will be left for staff that occupy the space uh, in the future at our current location. Uh, Will check noted the 2001 state funding final report indicates the state is responsible for pulling needed cabling in the courtrooms. I uh, asked whether the state or the county will re be responsible for that cost. Uh, McPherson said the cabling from the servers to the computers is needed. Document reflects that would be the state's responsibility. Uh, so Patterson suggested a separate meeting regarding that topic. Uh, if it's the state's responsibility, the state may want to use the county's vendor and pick up their portion of the cost. Uh, consensus was to have a meeting to discuss this further. Uh, Tagaro stated the county will provide the phone system for the Justice Center, but the phones will be purchased by the state. Uh, they're planning at this time to move existing telephones to their new location. Uh, additionally, as mentioned earlier, the furniture for the judges' chambers will be moved to the new location. However, there are a couple desks that may need to be fixed, furniture that will be needed for a magistrate's chambers. Um, so they've been working to acquire furniture from other counties uh, within the district as they move forward. Uh, so the recommendation, the county will fund the majority of the furniture, equipment, and technology needs at the Justice Center. Uh, exceptions include telephones and the reuse of furniture for the judges' chambers. A uh, meeting will be held to determine how to cost out the portion of the cabling that is the district's responsibility. 
Our court administration staff will be trained on audiovisual troubleshooting. Second item was the five year budget forecast, uh, which Hevila distributed, uh, and it is attached to these minutes. Um, in summary, we've tried to put together as detailed of as a forecast we can, uh, knowing we have several <coughs> large projects and initiatives going on at the county. Uh, this is a good step uh, coming into our budget process for upcoming years. So, um, as we move forward, we will have additional information as we learn more on some of our larger projects. So, at this point, that was informational. Uh, the next item that was discussed was the BKV proposal for design services. Uh, the county has received a proposal from BKV Group for design services uh, of a new county government center that would be located uh, west of the new Justice Center. Uh, it would house several of our departments that are currently housed downtown. Um, at this time, they think construction costs of a new government center would be approximately $40 million for approximate 120,000 square foot facility. Uh, to remodel our downtown lo location government center is estimated at $20 million. Uh, some considerations for staying at the current location include space needs, uh, leaks, boiler replacements, HVAC, outdated technology, and limited expansion possibilities. Uh, additionally, Health and Human Services Center is experiencing overcrowding. We have had some interest expressed from outside entities and the sites that those two buildings sit on. So we questioned uh, expending money to remodel our existing site for 10 to 15 years, uh, only having to dis construct a new facility at a later time. Uh, Delane thought the county could get by at the government center for seven years with minimal costs. Uh, Potter noted in 04, the cost to construct courts in the jail LEC at one time uh, was 45 million, and the cost today to construct just the justice center is 50 million. Uh, Vets said there's other things to consider, including interest rates for bonds and inflation costs. Uh, the XL power plant may not be in existence in seven years, and the county could lose uh, approximately $2 million in levy dollars from that source at that time. Mr. Chair, can we do these in separate? I should put in existence in 10 years, as I think was what the, the we would okay. actually, yeah. Just uh, trying to summarize here as we... Uh, um, so we did talk a little bit about uh, some of the debt that we would be carrying uh, with a new facility coming on board and looking out at a forecast if we were to add another facility project on. Um, talked about funding of capital improvement project uh, and uh, talked about the concern with raising taxes to those uh, constituents that may already have high taxes. Um, so discussion followed further on the proposal. I was conveyed to staff that uh, we should follow up with BKV Group regarding a reduction in the fee for design. Uh, so the recommendation was we'll check, we'll contact BKV Group to discuss the reduction in fee for their proposal for design services. Uh, another option, uh, if we weren't uh, didn't feel that was sufficient, uh, we could seek an RFP for these services. Uh, Burrell recommended doing nothing at this time. Um, Mr. Chair, a summary of the minutes and the three action items. If there are any corrections, please let us know. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the Committee of the Whole Minutes and the recommendations. I'll second that. Motion by Sorry. Commissioner Potter, second by Commissioner Houston. Go ahead, I Commissioner would Houston. just like to add that we're moving forward to get more information essentially. It's not that we're saying we're going to do this, we're going to do that. So we need to we need to know how it's all going to shake down and if whatever we do, what the impact is going to be on our taxpayers because if we remodel, it's going to have an impact. If we build, it's going to have an impact. And we, we, need, to, we need to get just what that means for all of us. There's more to come on this subject. For sure. sure. Yep. Yep. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Potter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. A, a couple <coughs> items on here. Well, you know, the uh, when uh, Paul Patterson wanted the Tier 1 troubleshooting training desired, I think that's a good idea for us to get there. Um, I'm still kind of skeptical of what the, what the district court's going to pay versus us. 
Uh, I think they're the way it's the statutes are written. It's gray as all get up. So I get I got a feeling that the monkey's going to be on our back on this. Um, and I do support having a separate meeting on that topic to make sure we spell this out. Who's doing what? As far as the tele existing move the existing telephones to new locations. If you look in the CIP for 2020, uh, it has a uh, about a million dollars in there for new phone system for the whole government center. So that would actually the timing of that works out actually great. That is, we're upgrading our phones; they'll be in there, so we don't have to. Uh, revisit that one and the other thing is we talked about cabling um, Paul Patterson from the Justice uh, Judicial District Administrator was uh, reminding us that Washington County saved some money by going to a lesser quality cable and that requesting that we don't follow that pattern we go with a the a better quality make sure uh, that we put it in correct the first time so we don't have to chase ghosts uh, chase things later on um, so those are just things I want to reiterate out to the public that might read this and say, what does this mean? What does that mean? If they s the CIP money's in there for phones already, it's perfect time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Batch. I just want to make sure if, in case anybody just skims over this budget forecast uh, part of it, the budget forecast piece is, is to give an idea or a flavoring to the board of what the tax county rate would be with the new justice center in it or a new justice center and a new government center building uh, with a tune of 40 million dollars on a 25 year bond on the new government center so that's kind of where he comes out with those uh, 42 44 46 uh, tax rates um, to give perspective to it and that also encompasses uh, you know new employees going potential new employees going forward and uh, a gamut of other items that we tried to forecast so I just want to make sure that the general public understands what that is it's mostly just to give board direction it's not a hard and fast uh, you, Mr. Chair. plan Commissioner Potter thank you Mr. Chair and to add on to what uh, Commissioner Vetch had said what, when we're doing these budget forecasts and these just you know best guest estimate uh, what we did do and I and I applaud this because I like this way of doing it thinking the revenues were basically held static just to because you don't know what's going to happen in the future and the expenses were where we thought they'd be so these are in my opinion worst case scenarios that we're looking at it any revenue growth like we know we're having right now is going to just make those numbers we, better. Pay, we paid it very conservative with it yes right and that's I, I like doing that way because there's no shock <clears throat> leader okay. mr. chair Go ahead. I, I just want to clarify them. Is, are we doing on these on separate things, or is it just all the minutes and all the recommendations? You can pull them apart if you'd like. Uh, I, because, yeah, because I can support some of them and then not the last one. So, Do you want to retract the motion in the second as it's on the floor and take it individually? Just, if, or who made the like motion? I did. did. You have to ask Michael. If, if, if that's the way, Commissioner, Brown, I want to make sure that everybody's yeah. part of this. If they're, if you want torn apart, I'll retract my motion, and we'll start again, and and I'll let you take out what you want, just to make sure everybody's. Okay, well, it's just the, the the new building thing is what I would not be in favor of, and I and that's I. That's in the I recommendation. Um, that's not in the recommendation. It's well, not? it's just. It just said his with... recommendation is do nothing. But which, what am I voting for when I do it? Because the rest of it is saying you're voting to get it. new numbers from BKV is what you're voting for. You just yeah, but I don't even want to do that, Derek. I just said it's a waste of time because I said just this doesn't cost any money to get the numbers though. We're not paying anything to get new numbers. You don't think it's when they're going to charge us anything for that? No, no. no. If they want our business, I don't know how they're going to yeah, charge us yeah. for new we're not, numbers. We're not spending any money to do that, so it's it's. They don't charge you to. All pay right, it. that's fine. <laughs> Go ahead and leave it then. I, okay. I, okay. So it's fine. staying as it it's was proposed. It. Yeah. Motion to second. Motion is reinstated. <laughs> All right. Is there any other discussion? I have one. Um, Alan, how many square feet is our is this current courthouse? One hundred twenty. One hundred thirty-two thousand. No. Is it? 127. Well, it depends what area you count. About 150,200. Oh, 150. Is that for all existing office spaces? Oh, I'm sorry. You're talking this bill. I thought you yes, meant. Oh, I'm sorry. That's thinking Justice Center. This building is about 157,000 square feet. Yeah. How much of it is used? I mean, that's where they stuff. Or is, is that including dead space that we can't use because it's not 
Well, the jail. It includes a lot of inefficient space and corridors yeah. tucked around, and uh, does that, that does the, not include the jail. It does not include the jail. Yeah, I believe that would number well, would include the booking the area. Space, uh, they believe it includes the booking area and portions of it, but if you want a specific number as to the whole site, including the jail, I'd have to get that. No, I don't. No, I I'm just kind of right. curious on what we have here. I believe I believe the whole jail site, everything is around 175. But I'd have to right, that double check. I thought there was that. like 135, 136 is like util, utilizable yeah. space. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure the annex and this government center side of utilized space is well, of space is about 157. I believe is the number, not including the jail portion. Okay. All right. But, so, just so that I make clear, you're looking at a new building that's 120,000 square feet. Okay, more efficient. Compared to a building where we currently have 157,000, oh, I just find it interesting. <laughs> Already, plus the Pomida building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, plus the Pomida. Yeah, but again, we have a larger building, and then and uh, you're going to so put it into a smaller building, and then and then you add this and Pomida, and I, then put it into a waste. Yeah, but smaller. you've got your courts all gone. Not already. realistic. Mm -hmm. No, but I mean, then you also look at the fact that I mean, I look, let's look at our predecessors across the river. They remodeled their courthouse, and it's costing them over twenty-two million dollars to renovate their existing space. You know, just goes to show you what remodeling costs. But for them, it makes sense because they're all out, they all are on one campus. You know, that's the question we have to ask: is we could start tearing this apart, and we're going to be remodeling about the same amount of square footage as Sherburn County is. Uh, it, it, it's going to probably get to that tune of over twenty million dollars real quick. And that's the question we have to ask ourselves. What I, I'm, I'm not sure what the answer is, but I want to make sure that we went through the process to make sure we're making the right. But Derek, what 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 Mark brought up is <coughs> is a valid argument. I mean, we we're we're sitting here and we're pricing this building out at 120,000 square feet. Yeah, well, when really it should probably be it should probably be 220,000 to be realistic with what we what our needs are, and then the dollar figure changes a whole lot. It right? could be. It could. It, it may be a forty-seven million, but it, I don't know. And that's the reason I, I don't. I think I. I think it's wrong that that they put a number out there that we used out of a a space study that he quickly just, changed. He just did change direction. He just did. What? That should be pretty accurate. Alan, did you get additional pricing or a change in pricing or updates or corrections? on why this building is so much more expensive to build than the uh, last one? Commissioner, I uh, received a letter yesterday and some backup documentation, some some information, but I haven't gotten through it yet. I just got uh, got to it yesterday afternoon. So um, at some point here, I guess I can get some feedback and work with uh, Lee on getting back to you guys on that. Yeah, I so it might it. be that the square footage was off and they, instead of 120, they really meant 240. I don't think so. There you go. Well, because I agree with you. Because I mean, it shouldn't. Co courtrooms and holding cells are way more expensive to build than just open office space, open flowing up. You know. And all extra bathrooms. <laughs> exactly. There's private, a lot of things. All of extra there. private bathrooms. Okay. So more to come on that. So we have a motion and a second to accept these minutes and recommendations for now. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimous. Um, yes, Sue, no, I'm going to have Sue do the finance committee. Okay, she's, that's fine. she's closer to it than she anybody, is. you, except for you, but you since can you got the technology me committee, and I, I thought we'd I'm hear. I'm hoping Charlie's doing technology. We hear something I different. Wasn't there. <laughs> oh, that's right. You weren't. I forgot. Well, maybe you can do it, Mark. All right, Mr. Chair and Commissioners, um, the Finance and CIP Committee met on June 1st, 2018. Members present included Commissioners Vetch, Commissioner Delayden, Coordinator Kelly, Auditor Treasurer Hevela, myself, Lindsay Meyer, the Assistant Finance Director, and IT Director Adam Tagaro. Um, at this meeting, we reviewed the annual funding locations that allocations that had been discussed at our previous meeting in April, um, looking at using levy dollars of two million five hundred and fifty thousand dollars, with an additional eight hundred thousand coming from the county program aid and MCIT dividends. Those allocations that were identified are one point one million for the ERP, seven hundred thousand for parks, four hundred and fifty thousand for highway and $300,000 for the Sheriff's Department. 
Then we also have other IT CIP projects and miscellaneous departments, and those are allocated $800,000, and these are annual allocations. Um, the funding allocation is um, proposed to begin in 2019. The 2018 CIP plan is fully funded at this time. Uh, during that meeting, we also received new information regarding the FBI training facility. Um, the FBI has tentatively committed to $2.2 million for the project, and this matter is actually going before the building committee meeting tomorrow um, for further um, review. Uh, during that meeting, um, if the county does proceed, there will be additional costs to be covered by the county, and currently there are $300,000 in CIP dollars that have been allocated toward that project. We also discussed the option to shift budget dollars between departments to make projects occur. Um, an example was using the highway department funding in 2019 to assist the sheriff's project and then shifting those dollars back to the highway in 2020. Uh, also discussed the consider that they consider utilizing all or part of the 2000 turn back dollars if they were to choose to, um, but did note that the preference really had been to use those funds toward debt levy or debt service, I'm sorry. Um, the recommendation that came out of the committee was move forward with the set amounts currently identified in the CIP, but in light of the FBI building, the county may need to look at utilizing 217 turn, turn back dollars rather than allocating them to debt service. Recap that the 2019 to 2023, sorry, I see I have a typo in there, uh, CIP will be funded with 2.55 million annual levy and $800,000 allocation from CPA and MCIT funds equal in a total of $3,335,000. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Vetch. Uh, I want to say that this was a very great move. We took some due diligence to us, but this makes our capital improvement predictable, sustainable, transparent, and easily accountable. Uh, this, this way we, we we know what we're spending, we know where the money is coming from to pay for it, and also it gives us the ability to have a rainy day fund. Having that turn back dollars used for future debt service gives us the ability in the future, if we have a downturn in the economy, we can use that money to offset the levy if need be. And it also gives our departments the ability to plan for the future and know what they have. Uh, it's, it's a win-win all the way around. So uh, I appreciate uh, your support members on making this uh, big change in terms of how we do uh, capital improvement in the county. And with that, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes and the recommendations for the capital improvement. Second. Motion by Commissioner Vett, second by Commissioner Potter. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none. Um, oh, uh, just for the public's sake, uh, all this information is included in the packet on the Wright County website uh, under agenda, just if somebody wants. If somebody's having trouble sleeping at night, this will help. <laughs> and uh, I want to also make it noted that this isn't a, a dramatic, this isn't an increase in, in CIP spending. It's more of a, a change in how we collect the, the funds, or not collect, but uh, yeah. allocate the funds. Allocate funds for it. So how we plan. Yep. Because mm -hmm. we're planning right. differently than exactly. what we have in the past. We're actually planning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Any other good discussions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimous. Uh, Charlie, did you want to do that? I can give it a try and you can help me out. I'll all right, go ahead. Okay, because I'm not as familiar with IT now as you guys are. Well, <laughs> it, Derek was. Did you enjoy that very much? It, no, it, was, the, it was good to get caught up a little bit, yeah. It's the first four, three to four lines that are the most critical that. Okay. that the board sees. Yeah. So anyway, um, Britta Holland, uh, I, I filled in for Commissioner Vetch on this. Commissioner Delayden was also there. But Britta Holland from the IT department um, um, put out the um, information on the project portfolio update. And there are 22 new projects for 2018. 24 projects have been closed in 2018, so we are making progress. 
which is on track, it says here, for a higher completion rate than in 2017. And 28 projects are actively being worked on. 41 projects are on hold due to project dependency. Um, but it, 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 basically what she kind of went through is kind of a, a prioritization a, a methodology to, to say which ones are more important, which ones get, get moved to the top of the list and get worked on. Um, and they're all very important. It's just everything's you know, important. We, yeah, we only have so many resources. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I know I don't know. I'm not sure it was in the minutes, but I, one of the things I talked about is sometimes mm -hmm. you're working on a project, even though another one might be a little lower priority, it might be closely related and and easily d accomplished at the same time. So um, there should be a, maybe a way to look at at that as well. So anything else on that one, Mark? No. Okay. Thank you. All right. I, I just thought those numbers were impressive. Yeah, they, they are making good progress. So the, anyway, the recommendation, the, um, all EDMS projects undergo detailed scoring, resulting in either several, several discretionary or strategic projects or a phased approach. Project request date will remain at original date unless involved parties decide otherwise and the recorder's EDMS historical scanning project was prioritized between Office 365 Share, SharePoint Online and the PA system upgrade. So that was the recommendation for that. The next was an ERP, it's, it's an enterprise resource planning. No one knows what this is yet, but anyway, no. <laughs> <laughs> But it's very expensive. Lee <laughs> talked about it. Um, um, the Infotech statement of work has been received and is, and he is still uh, seeking clarification of expected county staff time and involvement, as well as clarification on the project manager role. Um, Coordinator Kelly will update the committee once he has heard back from the Infotech, noting he wants to see movement on, e on ERP. And that was, I believe, just informational. And the next thing we talked about was the Office 365. Um, Adam Tagaro, our director, reviewed the progress of the Office 365. He stated that Skype and the exchange migration projects of Office 365 are being closed out. The county email migration from uh, NetMail is moving along with IT adjusting the process as necessary. The next step is SharePoint Online. Um, Commissioner Leiden questioned if the Office 365 project manager would you be staying on to aid us with this and to Carol confirmed that the contractor would be doing that. So we're making progress all the way through and um, um, Sherry Nelson, the IT manager, noted that she will be reviewing license planning in the Office 365 governance meeting as well. And that was informational only as well. So with that, Mr. Chair, I'll move forth the minutes and the recommendations. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Burrell, second by Commissioner Vetch. Any other discussions? Um, I was just kind of joking about that EDM. Not, nobody knows about it. It's just I don't know. <laughs> EDM or? ERP. Or, 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 ERP, yeah. <laughs> it makes sense to everyone else, but. There are too many E's? <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. Oh. Go, we'll vote on this. I'd have one, one other correction, though. But go ahead. You want to correct it before you? No, no, not not on this. It was oh, on okay. something else earlier. All right. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Same sign. Motion carries unanimous. Um, Charlie, you had something? Yeah. Just on the on the the motion before this, I forgot that that Mike made. Um, just read one of the recommendations. I can't find it, but it said another other. Or something like that. It started off at the another other, another other. Um, I don't know if you can see that under there. the CIP. Under this, yes, under this, um, the building stuff. Yeah. Turn it, turn it. Anyway, well, maybe you'll just catch it later. All right. But it was in one of the recommendations. It said another other, and then so another other. Okay, Mr. Burrell. Um, we have uh, a little bit of time for advisory committee, advisory board updates, so a little bit of time. Okay. Um, I was at Soil Water last night, and we talked about a lot of things, but one of them I, we're hoping to get, I have to talk with Commissioner Vetch yet about getting as many of the commissioners on the tour as we can this time. Um, 
I already admit to it. Yep. And Commissioner Hewson may be a little bit late. I, Commissioner I, Potter's on. I, I think I'll just leave my other meeting at 9.15 and get and over here. And try to make it. Yep. Okay. Okay. So, easier. Um, but I think that's going to be really great. We're going to have um, um, Representative Marion O'Neill, um, State Senator Bruce Anderson is going to be along with us. And I can't remember. There was another elected official, and I apologize for not remembering who that was. So, so we it, have some it, of them along, too. So Are we finishing at 3 or 3.30 here? You know, I'm going to have to, fi uh, we'll figure that out okay. for you, because we, um, Commissioner Vetch had a, a, commi a, a commitment <laughs> after this. So, but um, anyway, um, we, we, um, looked at some different things, talked a little bit about the, the action that we took here at the county with the taking on the, the buffer uh, regulations. And um, also, well, I, you know what, I don't want to <clears throat> mention it too early, but they, they did make a choice last night on the outstanding uh, conservationist of the year. But I don't know if I want to divulge that yet or not, if it's a surprise. So I'll uh, hold, off, I, I'll I hold off on I that. I don't think you should. You <laughs> Are you eliminate yourself from consideration? Mr. I'm, I'm, I was not on the list. No. And then um, the other thing, Mr. Chair, uh, people out in the public might be getting these calls too. And I was at Central Minnesota Council on Aging, and I figured out why we're getting these robocalls about um, you, your health insurance might be changing, and you need to to act on it immediately and whatever. What it is is Medicare services used to manage or uh, uh, do some of the work for your supplementals, like your Blue Cross or Health Partners supplemental to a Medicare plan. So when you went to the doctor, a person on Medicare with a supplemental, it was, you never had to do anything at all. Medicare went back, billed the supplemental plan and took care of it. They also took the money out of your Social Security check to pay for it. They decided not to do that. They're not doing it in any other state in the union right now except Minnesota, which had the highest percentage of any state, uh, highest number even, of any state that had these supplemental plans. So they are phasing them out and by January of 2000, um, 19. So just coming up, they will be, they're not doing it anymore. So they're, they're selling these different plans now that are not going to be managed by Medicare. So that's where these calls are coming from. And I know it's just one after the other for, for me, and, and I'm not even on Medicare yet. So, but anyway. Okay, that's it. <coughs> you um. There was a, a few things. They, Mike and I were at the open house. You were there for a longer period of time than I was for Highway 55, so maybe I'll just let you talk about that and and the closures and that kind of thing. 455 from the day after um, the 4th of July to they should finish the project up um, the day before, or the weekend before Labor Day. Labor Day. Yep. So anyway, but you might want to talk a little bit more about that. Um, the sheriff's that. open house, they had a, a nice turnout. I saw Alan there and <laughs> uh, we got to watch the lifelink helicopter lift and and Commissioner Vetch and Potters were there also. I saw at the same time I was anyway. So that's always that's always a fun event. Um, then I went to the workforce, my workforce meeting and those of us that have, we all kind of came on at the same time but we got this nice plaque five-year um, congratulations for serving on the Central Minnesota Joint, Joint Powers Board of Commissioners and the Central Minnesota Workforce Development Board. So that was nice. And I, I appreciated this quote, pride is a personal commitment. It is an attitude which separates excellent from mediocrity. So um, and some updates. We had a, a nice presentation on the Workforce Innovation, um, it was passed in 2014, Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, WIOA. And it's to, they really call it, instead of um, workforce centers, they call them one-stop centers. And um, there's a lot of uh, kind of objectives and goals they had set in 2014, but a lot of them still have not come to fruition. They have, of course, a lot of a lot of paperwork and you fill things out and 
you fill things out again. So that's that's a little bit frustrating. But anyway, so they they continue to work on that, and and our local workforce center has has they exceed the status of local performance in helping people. I mean, people that come in from adults, dislocated workers, older youth, younger youth, they categorize them in the four different areas. And the people that, they're called exiters, so the people that have successfully found a position and that kind of thing is, is real high, so. And um, then I went to the AIS open house, and there was a lot of people there, um, two news stations plus NPR. And um, they had a presentation and showed a, a video talking about under the water so you could go in and see, you know, what does milfoil look like? What does, you know, the different AISs look like? And then they, were, they opened them up for question. So there was a number of people that had comments, and I don't know if you got, got the comments from people, but... Well, I got one email. Okay, yep. And just a quick recap of numbers, as of June 4th, there was 113 ex inspections at the site. And as of May 29th, um, 39 decontaminations were done. And what's really kind of the beauty of having the decontamination site right, you know, on, you know, next to the, next to the inspections is people can just drive right through there. And they did find that as of June 5th, there was 75 violators that the, the inspectors found. Um, they haven't issued tickets, but if in the event that they do, the ticket, the money collected from the tickets will go to the agency that issues it, like if it's state patrol or if it's Wright County or, or who, who um, does that. But anyway, and then some discussion about how much the, the local lake associations are spending to try to get on top of, of things like Starry Stonewort, like Sylvia, spent 43000 at the end of 2017, but they hadn't found any new plants there of the starry stonewort. Um, Coronas is spending $70,000 just to keep one access open because they're just so so invaded with starry stonewort. Um, there's also the decline in drain plug violations. I mean, that that's the state statute, and people are supposed to, you know, remove their drain plug when they leave the lake but it was it was about 5% statewide now it's down to 2% which shows that people are getting educated and they're they're you know really trying to do their best to preserve our natural resources and here in Minnesota lakes are right up there so that would be and nice to be able to clean them as they come right off the lake but that it, it would it's and expensive. that was that was one of the discussions and um, one of the main points that were being raised by people that question this is that, you know, you need to have you need to have examine or um, inspections when people exit the lakes, and it was realized that there's no way to enforce that. You know, there you can't have an inspector at every single lake access to to uh, check check boats. So people have to. Do it, you know, they have to be responsible for doing that. That's also a state statute that you're supposed to inspect your boat after you leave a lake to make sure that you don't have invasives on there. And, you know, and it's true, a lot of the people are are good about making sure. They are, right. But there are a lot of people, and it, all it takes is that one person to one. really do a lot of contamination. Well, sure, when they just found Starry Stonewort, well, was it three years ago now? Was it 2015 that was first discovered in Cronus? And now there's at least 11 lakes in the state there that have it. So, um, yeah, like you said, it only, takes, it only takes one person going from lake to lake full of invasives to yep. introduce these... Um, invasive, <coughs> invasives. Anything else? That's it. Good. Um, last week was pretty quiet for me. Yesterday, um, Commissioner Batch, Commissioner Potter, mm -hmm. and myself, we were all up in Brainerd at a regional um, district, district meeting. And 
come to find out that uh, we're not the only county having trouble hiring <laughs> personnel um, we, we in different that. things, and <laughs> surveyors, and IT, and um, also in uh, jail. On a number of counties are doing comp class studies as well. Yes, yes, they are. Yes. Yeah. That, was, yeah. that was what was interesting yep. to find out. Yeah. So anyway, it was, it was very interesting. Um, they talked a little bit about the, um, I don't know want to, I, I don't want to call it an unsuccessful, but an unusual um, session, legislative session yeah. this year. So they talked about those sort of things and how it affects the county. And of course, we didn't get our money back from the lawsuit. And I asked for donations, but nobody really volunteered. I don't understand that. Since we defended them, as as Commissioner Vetch had reminded all of them. Other than that, uh, I'll let you the rest of you guys talk about anything else on there. Uh, just briefly on the uh, District 5 meeting, um, out of the few that I've attended, uh, this one was probably the most informative. I think all the counties that came brought a lot of information. Um, I kind of got a brief note of all the synopsis, and I think AMC will produce a list of what the synopsis correctly. Yeah, they usually send out a real high-level summary. Summary of what, what all the counties presented. Uh, but it was a lot of really good information, so a worthwhile meeting. Uh, last week on Thursday, I had my East Regional Juvenile Detention Center JPA meeting. Um, that was, once again, I don't know, you can look at how you want. Uh, beds are full. Uh, that's either a good or a bad thing. I don't know how you want to look at it. It's, it's good from a JPA standpoint, but from a societal standpoint, well, that tells us we have a lot of juveniles in a detention center <laughs> so, uh, from that side of it, but uh, kind of still working on some uh, capital improvement uh, upgrades in that building but uh, everything's kind of on track with that um, trend went to the uh, district 5 meeting and that's about all I have for my updates yeah, sure Potter yeah, thank you mr. chair there's a quick uh, another recap of district 5 even though it was kind of a mixed bag what the legislature did uh, I would say of all the areas the transportation got probably the best uh, bang out of the whole thing going on there didn't get everything we wanted but we got a little bit of pretty much everything we wanted uh, sales tax on auto parts made it through the house but stalled in the Senate that seems to be a, a common theme with all aspects whether it's child protection whether it's this whether it's that no matter what it is it, it seems to go through the house fine but it, a lot of things stall in the Senate for various reasons and, and sometimes it's just because it's an election year and they're afraid to take a stand because that's not for the centers though but for the party itself and so I, I'm hoping that for some of the issues coming up that didn't pass this year next year will be a better session for them because it's not an election year and they might actually actually hold the hearings to get things done so it's one of those that you just got to pick your time when you you present these things uh, as Commissioner Houston said uh, uh, Last week we went to Highway 55, had an open house. I was there for pretty much the whole three hours of it. It was between two and three dozen people. Uh, a lot of asked questions. A lot of them wanted things that are not going to happen there. They could be added to safety things afterwards. Uh, they asked about bypass lanes that we've had studied before, and they came back with reports that it's not necessary. Uh, the only one that seems to get a little traction with some notes from MnDOT was the at Eakin Avenue, which is just east of Dis Dickinson Springs. Mm -hmm. That one's a bypass that's existing, but they asked because of the speed there that they extend it by about 20 feet, and I believe that that took they took notes on that 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 one might actually get extended by that because of the speed and because the county road shortly after that there's no turning on that because they're going through that neighborhood to avoid that awkward angle on the curve um, otherwise the the notes are there where they're going to be four open cuts along there for new culverts on the way down so those will be when those happen those will be an absolute delay that day while it's getting put in there will not you'll have to go around that mm -hmm. Uh, local traffic is allowed to be there. If you're in that construction zone, you will be allowed to get to your house. Um, so it's, it's, it's going to come out right. I'm really happy that they got upgraded to a reclaim. And hopefully we're going to get a much better road out of that. Um, so that's um, more, more to come with that one coming forward. Uh, at the Sherburne County Open House, um, they all of them thanked uh, Wright County for uh, supplying a plant. For their building we're the only 
people that actually supplied something like that. I thought it was kind of a class act on our part. It was a good idea you had Commissioner Potter. Yeah, yeah all, all of us, did it, you know, we all did it. But, you know, they, they much appreciate it. It's very nice plant. Uh, Susan did a great job picking out the plant. Um, and it looks good there. I mean, it's, cool. and like I say, with that tour, I walked around with Alan uh, on some of the points in there. Um, I think we, we need to be thankful that we got some really fantastic bids the way we did. Oh, yeah. Uh, on our uh, things there. And of course, like with any building like that, the perfect one's the next one. And so I think we got some innovations in ours that Sherburn County didn't have, but then that was a couple of years ago when they were doing that and things change. And whoever builds after us is probably going to have some innovations that we're not thinking of now, too. But uh, otherwise, it was, it was uh, very uh, informative. And, and I don't know, not only got to walk around with our architect and talk about a few things, but with Alan and take a tour, see what's going on there. Uh, the judges have the scenic view of the opposing roof. <laughs> yeah. So that's, so there. And Friday I went to the sheriff's open house and was, Commissioner Houston was also there. Um, it, and that gentleman, the clown, is it Bob is his first name? The gentleman what? Oh, the gentleman that did clowns there. And J Commissioner Vetch was also there. Oh, I, I didn't see that. That was the long, the guy that did the clowns, it was, he works for the sheriff's department. The longest line by a long shot. I mean, oh, yeah. that kid's, yes. I mean, he was just. Yeah. What, did, what did you get? I didn't get anything. Oh, you didn't stand in line that long? long. Oh, okay. Long. I saw the hot dogs and I went that way. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, no, but it was, it was good. And, and people that came in and saw it, I had a lot of questions from people asking. They didn't realize how much equipment that the sheriff's department had in there. And just reminded them that this all used to be scattered to the four winds and they'd have to go round it up and that takes time. And uh, I think it was a really good at that the major crime scene they had a little expose there and that was real interesting with the new equipment new technology they still take some old photographs old-fashioned because of that but the the new technology that's in there do the multi-angle the 3d uh, it, it was just it was interesting as so I'll get up as when they get to a scene what they have to do all these things just made it so people see what the sheriff's department actually does there uh, uh, Auditor Treasurer Hevla uh, was there for toured the jail and and uh, just see what's going on there. The fourth pod that's not open yet. Then I'm hoping that we actually get people and let's start making some money on that thing. So hopefully that uh, comes to fruition this year. Um, and coming up this Wednesday is the Mayor's Association mm -hmm. Wednesday in St. Michael. So yep. hopefully we all get there. Chad Hausman is going to be the speaker on transportation and that which is uh, good. It's at the Main Street Farmer. That's right, downtown, in the old downtown heart of St. Michael. So for Commissioner Burrell, who doesn't get over to the east side of the county much, it'll... Were you yeah. coming on Wednesday? I, I, have to, I didn't RSVP yet, so I don't know if it's too late or not. Show up, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because that meal is a little more expensive there, we'll have to pay for that. Well, well the other thing is uh, you had to pre-order. Correct. Well... I'll check after the meeting. Well, I'll share my dinner with you, Charlie. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to. Yeah, well, I know you aren't, yeah, because... We share with Charlie, you don't get anything. <laughs> the other news uh, that we had is, you know, we, uh, we got 60, $56 million from the Quarters of Commerce this year, which is a, a good uh, project. Also, when District 3 submitted plans to central office, to be submitted for the build grant, the federal build grant, which has replaced the old Tiger grants. Um, it was one of the three projects selected to send to the feds uh, for County Road uh, 94 by the 19 area. Uh, we're gonna request the whole $26 million that's uh, allotted to that um, to try to enhance and finish off all of 1994, the bridge over everything else, get it all done. Um, so that will precipitate me going out with the 94 Coalition uh, again to uh, solicit my new best friend, Anthony Bedell, from uh, DOT out there in, in Washington. And the fact that there's only three from the state and the fact that this is the only road one that I recall from that was the other one was a Duluth at Harbor, and I believe the one from uh, Moorhead was an airport issue. So we got a, a, a pretty good chance of getting this money because uh, Minnesota has been batting zero on Tiger grants for the last few years and I'd like to break that trend. Well it's going to be critical if that Mall of Entertainment goes out there. 
That, we haven't heard much about that for a while. All they have to do is pull a permit. That's all they're waiting on. We don't know why, and you know, some people think it's money. Who knows what the cash is? But so they got all the studies, all the master plans, all the planning, all the stuff has been done. All the public hearings have been done. I can understand that they're probably waiting on 19 to figure out what's going to happen there too, because that's going to have an effect on on people getting in and out. Sure. Correct, and, and that's where 19 was a slated for 2019 to try to get some of this stuff going uh, there, and it might be part of that because they were their project was part of the input of how to design 19 going north and forward in the future. So it's, it was put in there just like at County Road 38 what design of that intersection based on potential land use and what things we potentially know is going to happen not only on Albertville but going up the road at Seagull what's possibly up there yeah I'm also, <laughs> also referring to the intersection or the um, entrance and exits of 94 because mm -hmm. that's kind of a goofy thing it right is, now. It, it's it, it's it it's different but uh, we just uh, cross our fingers and hopefully we can get some of that build yep. money the advantage we have in this particular cycle is that uh, Vice President Mike Pence being from Indiana, a lot of product that get made in Indiana have to ship on our freeway system through this state to get to the points. And and being that the, the question for Anthony Patel was since uh, the Midwest doesn't seem to be getting any of these Tiger grants, how can you sure he said just get the project to us? Let's go because I got to believe that the heartland is where they want to try to spend some of this money because whether it's you know, for Indiana, Chicago, it's got to get through us to get somewhere else. And these are critical as, as we've all heard from Golden Plump and speedy delivery and how much delay in traffic and how much it's costing them. I'd have to imagine that the national carriers are having the same problem. We're just not getting there. They're probably not extrapolating the numbers down to our particular little segment. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um. County Coordinator, you were on vacation last week. You're more relaxed. You look it <laughs> so far. Um, I'm, I'm assuming you really don't have anything to add because your um, assistant took care of all the problems <laughs> last week. Yeah, pretty much. Staff yeah. did a great job. I knew they would. Yes. Full faith for me on Thank that you, one. Susan. So. So you're yeah, saying Lee should be gone more? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good to try something new. Mr. Chair, one yeah. thing I, it's Buffalo Days this week, so, you know, check out the activities. There's lots of fun things to do. Just to when is the parade? Saturday. Saturday night. Saturday? Saturday. Yep. Oh, it's Saturday evening. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's right. I got a wedding on Saturday. I guess I won't be able to make it. <laughs> All righty. Hearing nothing else before the board, we are... Done at 1052.